Hi, I'm Dave once again with TJN, the Jesus Network. It's time to change the planet, and we are talking with Chris Riggs of the Lapine Community Kitchen. And right now in the Lapine area, which is in central Oregon, they're desperately in need of somebody who can donate them firewood. Chris, tell me what's going on. Well, um, yeah, usually Neighbor Impact uh, provides uh, uh, firewood assistance down here, and this year they were unable to uh, due to a... um uh, uh, their provider was unable to give them firewood. So there are a number of people down here. I think we have a list of around 35 people needing firewood for this winter. And right now we have some firewood here. Unfortunately, it's green wood. And what we're looking for is dry firewood. And like I said, we're on desperate straits to, to get it. Uh, people have been on our list for almost three weeks needing firewood. So how important is firewood as a heating fuel in Lapine? Well, for many homes, um, um, a good example is like mine. It's the only source of heat in the home. And so uh, getting firewood, and many people don't have the uh, resource to go pay uh, anywhere from 120 to $150 a cord. That's just not in their, their budget. And so they come to us when they can't go to any other source. And this year we were partnering with um, uh, St. Vincent de Paul and the Rotary Club, and they gave out uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 cords of wood, and they simply ran out. And we're trying to fill the gap here. And like I said, we still have about 30 people in this area trying desperately to get firewood. Are you looking for somebody to just provide you the wood delivered, or exactly um, what are you looking for? Um, we'll come and pick it up, or they can deliver it. We're, we're, we're open to anything. Um, like I said, I have a, a good volunteer staff here, and they're most willing to go out, even if it's down trees that are you know, dry and already down, they're willing to go out and cut it themselves and bring it down here. Chris, let's talk about the overall economic situation in the Lapine area in Central Oregon. Unemployment's high. We're in the middle of a recession. We're going into Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday coming up. How bad is the situation economically for the people in the Lapine area? Well, uh, of course, Lapine is um, considerably higher than the greater Deschutes County area. So you're you're I talking about unemployment. Unemployment, yeah. The unemployment rate down here is considerable, especially when we go into the winter season where uh, summer jobs are, are gone. And so a number of people are, are laid off. Um, a number of my volunteers during the winter uh, come down here to volunteer simply because they're, they're on unemployment now because their summer jobs are gone. And, and that's the case with the many people down here. Their, their jobs are seasonal. So we uh, see a marked increase during the winter of uh, people needing services. Well, what about this year compared to previous years? Can you quantify it, and just how much more worse is it this year than last year, say? Uh, Well, I have to say, honestly, I've seen no improvement. We had a huge jump between 2009 and 2010. We saw almost a 43% increase in the number of people we serve, and the uh, numbers are uh, also higher this year, probably around 15 to 20% higher. 15 to 20% higher than last year? Higher than last year. And that year you had a 40% increase? Yes. Okay. What are your needs? Food, firewood? What do you need? Well, just about everything. Um, and certainly food, um, perish- non-perishable foods for a food pantry. Uh, the last two months, um, our food coming out of the uh, Oregon Food Bank has been cut back almost 50%. So we've actually had the last two months... Uh, about four days out of the month, we've had to shut down our pantry simply because we had no food to give out. Um, so we're trying we're trying to fill the gap with local donations, but that's kind of hard too right now. And so food is is a, a big commodity here, a big need. Uh, also, perishable foods. Uh, we have what we call the produce stand, where we uh, uh, bring in things like uh, bread and uh, milk products and uh, bakery products where they uh, come out and come into our air and our services and goes out immediately uh, and those are a big need and also fruits and vegetables um, many people who are on assistance the snap program uh, people used to know that as the uh, fruit stamps um, they their their stamps their services snap services don't go far enough and so they get many of their uh, uh, fresh produce which here in Lapine, it's a little bit more expensive than in, uh, say, in Bend. 
and so they get a lot of our pro- their produce from us. Uh, we also do um, uh, hygiene items, so things like uh, toilet paper, uh, toothpaste, shampoo, laundry soap, and we provide th- those needs as well. What does the future look like this winter for your agency? Uh, a big <laughs> need, uh, not a lot of uh, resources to draw on? Uh, it, you described that very accurately, yes. Um, uh, a lot of need and less resources. Are you in danger of running out of food or other critical supplies? Um, we've come close so far this year, a couple, of, a few times, but uh, not yet, and I certainly hope that does not the case. What about people coming forward and donating? A lot of agencies we've talked to have a big need, and the situation they're running into is a lot of people in the past who were donors are now needing support. And, that, and that's correct. Um, we don't see the local donations that we used to see. So we're having that same problem, yes. So you've been relying on the Oregon Food Bank and others. Yes, and then what we get from grant money, we go on and purchase food. What's the grant supply look like? I'd say that again. Uh, the, you say you've relied on grant money. Grants, are the, yes. Are the grants still available? Uh, there are some grants, but there are not as many, much grants as there was last year. And then also the uh, federal grants uh, have been cut back way back, and that money is virtually all dried up. So what's your state of mind? I mean, you're looking at a big need, and it looks like all the resources are drying up. Is it uh, very frustrating for you, I'm sure? Uh, yes, it does get frustrating, but, you know, it. people come and, and uh, help us out when the, the need is great. Um, we're serving our Thanksgiving dinner today. Um, right now, we've been open for about an hour. We've already served uh, over 150 people uh, uh, Christmas, I mean, excuse me, Thanksgiving dinner. And um, two weeks ago, I did not have enough food in order to serve that many people. And within the la- I just put out the word, lo- word locally, and within the last two weeks, uh, people have stepped up and and we just have an abundance of food for Thanksgiving today. So we're very grateful for the, the local Lapine community. But like I said, the need is ongoing, and, and so we need it to continually come in, and that's not the case right now. Okay. How are you feeling? Are you frustrated? Uh, well, yes, somewhat, but, you know, we've been through hard times before, and I just take it one day at a time. I've been doing this for 10 years. And um, you get used to the ups and downs, um, but you just hang in there, and you know, you know, God will provide. He always has, and He always will. And how can people, if they want to get in touch with the Lapine Community Kitchen, how can they get in touch with you? Sure, they can call us at um, area code five four one five three six one three one two, or they can email us as well at Lapine Community Kitchen at yahoo dot com. Okay, Chris, thank you for, God bless you for all you do. Thank you, sir, and and thank you for this interview. I'm Dave Adams, TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet.